drummer can go with giant rigs, but is equally comfortable rocking a tiny rig as featured on the Hillsong Creative DVD. In this video, I attempt to recreate his minimalist three pedal, one amp rig coming up. Hello and welcome to the video. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Justin and I'm all about worship guitar. Please consider subscribing, hitting the bell notification button and treating me to a coffee to support these videos and my ministry. Stick around to the end for a bonus where I share where to download the patch featured in this video. If you've met before, welcome back. to Josiah who inspired this video. We were talking about the draft and its rigs, and the subject of the Hillsong Creative DVD came up. In an attempt to decouple the gear from the tone, Droff does the unthinkable. And from here, I'm just running into a first stage overdrive, which is this joyride, made by Divide by 13, and straight into this Timmy pedal, which is another overdrive pedal. From that, I'm just going into the old Boss DD5 uh, delay, digital delay with a tap tempo. And from this, my guitar signal gets fed straight back into the match, so I'm only using one amp today. It goes to show, tone truly is in the fingers. But the gear is important to help your fingers communicate that tone. Let's get to recreating this setup. With 8 blocks on the HX stump, we're in a good position to recreate minimalist rigs. Let's deal with the essential components first. Two overdrives, one delay, one amp, and one cap. Box AC15, which is a little bit beat up, and the matchless Spitfire 15 watt over here. You can see it's all marked up there with a couple of 57s and a 4050. The most important components are the amp and cat, with Drop specifying that he's using a single matchless Spitfire 15 mic'd up with a short S57 and an Audio Technica AT4050. The Spitfire 15 is a small combo that is known for pristine cleans, but that isn't an equivalent on the HX Stomp. What we could do is approximate it by using a matchless style amp and focus on getting a boxier cab sound. For that matchless sound, I went with the Matchstick Channel 1 set clean with little breakup. It's it's important not to set this on the edge of breakup because Spitfires don't get much preamp distortion. The compression and drive is going to come from the overdrives. To emulate micing a single cab with two microphones, you can use a dual cab and set different mics. The cab sound was hard to nail because there are no 1x12 matchless cabs. I tried using the same cab mic to a 57 in a condenser mic model but found the tone to be one dimensional and overly shrill in the top end. It needed some life and depth of body, which I wasn't going to get with the same cab type. To address these issues, I set one of the cabs as the 1x12 sold down on for body and used the parametric EQ with a more aggressive low cut to approximate a boxier sound. Drop's use case of the divided by 13 joyride as the first stage overdrive and the Timmy as the second stage sounds like he's using the joyride as the primary source of overdrive tone and using the Timmy as a transparent gain boost. For the Timmy, we obviously go with the Tima, being careful not to cut out the high end. The goal in using the Tima here is to give the first stage overdrive a louder voice, and high end is the first thing that can be cut off very quickly if we're not careful. To counter this, make sure that the high control is set lower. Remember, the Tima EQ controls are cut controls. A lower setting means less cut and more high end, and a higher setting means more cut and less high end. The Joyride was harder to emulate. It's apparently a clone of the Color Sound Overdriver with a thicker treble streak when driven hard. On Josiah's recommendation, he helped me locate a drive model from the legacy folder that I would have overlooked, the Color Drive. So what is the Color Sound Overdriver tone? It's generally described as warm, open, and transparent that pushes an amp very hard. As such, the goal here is to tune the two drives to get the matchless amp into natural sounding overdrive, almost like you're going with two very high headroom clean boosts. <laughs> Thank you. 
infuses a DD5 here in mono. Mono delay! That's going to be a big culture shock for me since I'm so used to stereo delays. The delays are clean sounding, they end up with a little crunch on the initial attack because Draft is slamming the front end of the amp with the two drives. To emulate this, I went with a vintage digital model with minimal tone roll off. As far as the rig is concerned, we're done. But there's still the acoustic environment to consider and the overall feel of the tone is heard over the recording. I believe they're recording in the city campus's main hall, which led me to try out the two different hall reverbs on HX Stomp. I landed on the dynamic hall, not just because it's the newest kid on the block, but it has the parameters to tweak a brighter hall sound with some depth. Finally, because we're tweaking for that recorded sound, I put a compressor at the end to glue all the elements together. Let's hear how this tone sounds with some playing examples. I think it would be a lot easier to achieve that boxy matchless 1x12 cap tone if Line 6 provided us with that option. And using the dual cap block and the EQ, we slightly veered off tension, but it was necessary to land the tone in the general ballpark of how draft sounded like in the recording. Speaking of which, here's today's question. What do you think? Is your approach to tone crafting different from mine? I'd love to hear your ideas and thoughts in the comment section below. That's it for me, thank you for watching this video. Head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page to download this patch and more to support these videos and my ministry. Share this video with someone who you know is interested in recreating Drop's minimalist rig. Until next time, I'm Justin and I'm all about worship guitar.